this is Elijah Craig's small batch. My name is TJ Gamble and you've stumbled into Bruzel. In this video, I'm going to try this small batch, grade it on six different criteria, assign it a Bruzel score, and see how it stacks up against the other whiskeys we've tried. There are several stories on how bourbon came to be aged in charred oak barrels. This is definitely one of them, and even this one has multiple variations. Is it true? I don't freaking know. Your guess is as good as mine, but here it is. In 1789, a Baptist preacher named Elijah Craig discovered that charring his barrels drastically changed the flavor of the whiskey he was storing in them. Now, some folks say it was discovered after an accidental fire burned some of his barrels. Other folks say he was just using old charred sugar barrels. Either way, he noticed a difference and he liked it. And this, according to the brand's own marketing, is how Elijah Craig became the father of bourbon. The brand name Elijah Craig Bourbon was first registered in 1960 by Commonwealth Distillers, but there's no evidence that they actually ever used it. Heaven Hill actually acquired the Elijah Craig brand name in 1976 and released the first Elijah Craig bourbon a decade later. Those early releases were designed to be a premium 12-year-old product that would stand out against the other bourbons of that time. Today, Elijah Craig is still owned by Heaven Hill, and they're the largest family-owned distillery in the United States, and they own quite a few whiskey brands like Evan Williams, Parker's Heritage, Pikesville, Rittenhouse, Henry McKenna, and one of my favorite, Old Fitzgerald. Elijah Craig Small Batch is a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey aged in a level three charred oak barrel with a mash bill consisting of 78% corn, 12% malted barley, and 10% rye. This is a very similar mash bill to Evan Williams, although this one has just a little more corn. They dropped the 12-year-old age statement off of this bottle in 2016, and today they supposedly use a blend of eight to 12 year old barrels. That decision to lower the age allows them to keep inventory plentiful so you can get these just about anywhere. And I usually see these at around 30-ish dollars here in Alabama. Let's see what the bottle tells us. On the front, Elijah Craig Small Batch 1789 Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. We have Elijah Craig Signature with Father of Bourbon underneath. First to char oak barrels, 94 proof, made in true small batches for balance and smoothness. On the side, it says Elijah Craig small batch again, distilled and bottled by the Elijah Craig Distillery, Bardstown, Kentucky. And there's nothing on the back. So there's not a ton of marketing copy on this guy. Like it's pretty simple. It has that signature bottle shape. They just kind of let the whiskey speak for itself. This might be the first one we've reviewed that didn't have a freaking novel on it. Let's check out the distiller's notes. On the nose, delightfully complex with notes of vanilla bean, sweet fruit, and fresh mint. The taste, smooth and warm, pleasantly woody with accents of spice, smoke, and nutmeg. The finish, long, sweet, and slightly toasty. And as I mentioned, we're gonna judge this bottle on six different criteria, but before we do that, it really helps me out if you'll like this video, maybe hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so. Also, we're continuing to try to take these to the next level, as you'll see here with our evolution of the Bruzel 2.0 scoring system. Your donations on Patreon and your support here on YouTube channel memberships really helps us do that. And of course, if you're interested in any of that, links as always are in the description. And of course, you can always get cool merch like our horse collector shirt here, only available at bruzel.com. All right, that's enough talking. Let's get to drinking. Here is my blind review of Elijah Craig Small Batch. So we have a new Bruzel score. We're doing things a little different. We're trying to be more fair, not skewed so much toward high proof whiskey and really evolving our scoring system to make sense. Because as we added more whiskey to the last scoring system, it just didn't work. Like it didn't hold up. There was just too much in the middle and we had some scores that were just kind of weird. And so we're really skewing these toward flavor and not proof, right? So we've changed the scoring system. I'll explain it as we go through it. The first difference is that we're doing these blind. I have no idea what whiskey I'm trying, although you do. Like you just watched me read off the label and talk about what all the whiskey is, but I don't know, that's filmed in the future. I'm past me, that's future me. I'm past me, that's future me. So we just don't know. We had seven samples poured here. And again, I don't know what the samples are. We're down to th the third one here. I'm gonna pull card number three here. This is card number three. If you haven't done blinds, they're so freaking fun because you run the risk of just looking like a fool. This could be God knows what. This could be my favorite whiskey ever, William LaRue Weller, and I could just rank it a 50. Like I wouldn't because I love that whiskey, 
but I have no idea what this is. That makes it a lot more exciting and a lot more fun. And it may be, I, I don't know yet because we haven't released or edited any of these videos as I'm filming. Like I'm just going through seven reviews. I don't know how this turns out. Like it may really amp up the drama that I don't know and y'all know if this is a really, really good whiskey. So. That's gonna be fun to see. I'm gonna go through the criteria here and I'm gonna to try to explain it. It does require some math at the end. That's the only downside of this system versus our other one that was really, really simple. But simple obviously doesn't work. The first criteria we're looking for here is aroma slash flavor. And we've grouped those into one and that's gonna be 50% of the overall score. We have a couple of other criteria that relate to flavor. So once we get through all three of the flavor criteria, flavor is gonna be 80% of the overall score. And I think that's much more fitting and it doesn't pertain as much to proof. Although I think there's still advantage for those that have a high proof point. So first, aroma slash flavor. And I'm gonna grade this from zero to 100 and it's gonna be 50% of the overall brusel score. So the nose is a little light on this. It's pleasant, but nothing really jumps out at me as exceptional about it. So just kind of a nice standard bourbon oakiness, a little caramel flavors, just those typical, prototypical bourbon notes that you get from just about any decent quality bourbon. And flavor wise, it kind of delivers exactly that, right? It's just kind of quintessential bourbon. So this one might have a little less kind of red fruit sweetness that I'm looking for and a little more, what's the word here? What am I looking for? A little more toffee, a little less fruit, I guess is how I would describe that. And again, I don't know what this is. I don't even want to guess. I, I should guess. I should guess at these, shouldn't I? Would that be more fun? Would it be more fun if I guessed and I said I thought this was like an Elijah Craig or something like that. Cause I get a lot of that kind of toffee notes on Elijah Craig. Now I get a lot of it on the barrel proof. This has a little proof to it. I'm getting a little heat. Now it could be because we've done several reviews and I'm starting to feel the proof a little bit, but it's not a barrel proof. This is not a super high proof whiskey, but I'm definitely getting more toffee notes than red fruit. And I'm not a huge fan of the toffee notes. They're not bad and you may prefer them. So I'm not trying to discount the whiskey because of that. This is definitely a flavor and aroma that is above average. And so with these, we start at 50 and we subtract if it's below average, and we increase it if it's above average. Like the proof is starting to come through on that a little bit. I still don't think it's a full proof, but it's starting to show some proof points. I'm gonna give the flavor a 60. And the next criteria is complexity. And this is 20% of the overall Brusel score. And again, I'm gonna give it a score from zero to 100. And what we're looking for here, how do the flavors evolve, right? Are there flavors when it first hits your palate and then all the way through the finish? Does it really evolve into something special? And are there a ton of like subtle and nuanced or deep flavors that you're experiencing? And the complexity on this is not spectacular. It's not bad. It hits me with a little bit of sweetness on the start of the palate. It kind of develops into a little bit of an oakiness and then it kind of evolves into like that little bit of kind of toffee oak on the, uh, on the finish. Overall, I think it's pretty good. Like this is not a bad whiskey at all, but that complexity is not something that I'm just oohing and eyeing over. So I'm gonna give that a 60 as well. And the next criteria is mouthfeel. How thick and viscous is the whiskey? How well does it coat the mouth? And I think the mouth feels okay. It, it has a little bit of a thickness to it, a little bit of a viscosity. It's not something that's just overwhelming or fantastic, but it's not bad. I, I really think it's just right there in that 60 range again. Like I, I can't help it, it's just, it's just slightly above average in every freaking statistical category. And the next criteria is finish. What does it leave you with when everything's said and done? And the more I drink it, the less I think the proof on it is. For some reason, it was hitting me a little bit of, of a higher proof there at the beginning, but it's starting to really tame down. I don't get a ton of burn. It's almost just kind of an indescript sweetness on the finish. So not bad, but not exceptional either. So I'm going to give it, like I hate to just keep giving it 60s, but is that really what it is? I, I think it might be a little bit below that. Like I think I enjoy the flavors, 
a little better than the finish. So I'm gonna give it a 55. And our next two criteria are availability and value. And to judge those, I have to be able to tell what the whiskey is. So we're about to ruin the surprise and I'm going to crack this sucker open. So I am looking at Elijah Craig. Dang it, I'm like Nostradamus. Whoa. I pegged that one, I pegged that. A good whiskey, slightly above average, but overall a, a solid pour, like nothing wrong with that pour at all. Availability wise, Elijah Craig's pretty regularly available. Now it's not a hundred, it's not Jack Daniels available, but I would say it's Four Roses single barrel available, if not more so. So I'm gonna give the availability on this one an 80. And the next criteria is a value. At $25, like that's a pretty good whiskey. I would say the value on that's gotta be an 80 as well. Like that's pretty good value. Like that's not a bad sipping whiskey. Now I prefer the red fruit stuff versus kind of those toffee flavors I get on Elijah Craig, but you may be different than that, right? Like yours may be, completely different. So if you prefer a little more of those notes you get on Elijah Craig, you're gonna love that value. And that gives Elijah Craig a brusel score of 61.5. What do you think of this rating of Elijah Craig? Do you think this is fair? Do you think it's where it should be? Do you think I've got it too high, too low? Let me know down in the comments.